So we're about to begin the last bit of material that we're going to cover in this class, and it's a really important topic in the grand scheme of linear algebra. A lot of applications of this. <clears throat> so probably this is one of the most useful uh, parts of linear algebra. It's a little bit more advanced than everything else we've done. It's about uh, what we call eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Eigenvalues, eigenvectors. And we want to define what these things are. So our first thing is to do a definition. So let's say you have a square matrix. So we were back in square matrices a while when we're talking about invertible matrices. Now we're back to them again, square matrices. So let A be an n by n matrix. So we're square again. We're only going to be dealing with square matrices when talking about eigenvectors, eigenvalues. So let's say you have an n by n matrix. So a real number called lambda it's a Greek letter. Lambda, which is a scalar, it's a real number, is said to be an eigenvalue of A, an eigenvalue of A, provided There's a non-trivial vector, a non-zero vector. Yeah, this pen is not working all the day, provided there is a non-zero vector. We'll call it a non-zero vector. X and Rn such that the following happens. Oh, that's not even... Oh, come on, man. A times x. So when you multiply a times x, you get the van vector lambda x. Okay? So that's what an eigenvalue is. It's a number here, lambda, that when you multiply... So here's the idea. You have a vector x... Here's your vector x. And what you do, you apply the matrix to that vector. Let me do it over here, okay. Okay. So I have a vector over here in Rn. I'm not writing well. So I have some vector over here x. Right, it's an Rn. All right, and I multiply this vector over here by A. So I multiply A times X. And then over here, what happens is I get a scalar multiple of X. So it might stretch it out, for example. This would be lambda X. Yeah, so I'm multiplying X by A. I get lambda X. So if lambda were equal to 1, for example, it would just be the same vector, right? It would be the same vector. If lambda is bigger than 1, it's going to stretch it out really long. If lambda is 0, it's just going to give uh, the 0 vector right here at the origin. Or if lambda is negative, it's going to go in the opposite direction like that. Okay, so that's what an eigenvalue is. Eigenvalue is just the number that when you multiply A by a particular vector and it scales it out, stretches it out, or shrinks it down, or turns it to zero, it's that particular value. And the x vector, the non-zero vector, where this transformation occurs is called an eigenvector corresponding to lambda. So how do I want to say that? The non-zero vector... That's this red x here, non-zero vector x. Yeah. In Rn, is called the eigenvalue. Corresponding to lambda.
So for every eigenvalue, there's an associated eigenvector. Okay, so what do we want to say here? Um, let's just state a theorem, useful theorem. So in section two, we, we teach you how to really find eigenvalues efficiently. In this section, we're just going to beat around the bush with it. We're going to develop some really useful tools, though. So, lambda is an eigenvalue of A. Ooh, it's writing OK right now. If and only if the following happens. If and only if. A minus lambda times the identity matrix has a non-pivot column has. Non-pivot column. Moreover, any non-trivial solution, any non-trivial solution, that means a non-zero vector solution, to the associated uh, homogeneous equation a minus lambda i n times x equals a zero vector. So this homogeneous equation is uh, any non uh, any non trivial solution to this homogeneous equation is an eigenvector. corresponding to lambda. This is really easy to show. Let's go ahead and show this and see the mechanics of this in motion. All right, proof. So first of all, we want to prove uh, lambda is an eigenvalue of A if and only if A minus lambda times A then D is a non has a non-pivot column. So let's do that. First of all, lambda is an eigenvalue of A. We'll state that. What does that mean? Well, according to the definition, that means A times some vector x equals lambda times x. This is for some non-trivial x, right? x not zero. We'll say it's a non-zero x, right? x is not the zero vector. Okay, now what we can do In place of this x here, what x, this blue x, I'm going to call this the blue x right here, that's the same thing as what the n by n identity times x, right? The identity times x gives you x. Okay, this is for some x not equal to zero, non-zero x vector. So just keep in mind when you have an eigenvalue, this has to work for a non-zero vector, a non-zero vector. We know it works for the zero vector, obviously, but has to work for a non-zero vector. All right, so now what we can do is subtract uh, the right-hand side from both sides of the equation, so we get ax minus lambda i n times x equals the zero vector. This is for some non-zero vector x. All right, now, using our properties of matrix vector multiplication, there's one property that says if you have an x here on the right, you can kind of factor that out, right? That vector would distribute over the matrices. So you're going to have a minus lambda i n is another matrix. OK, so you're able to factor out that vector out of those two matrices, right? You have two matrices, A minus and lambda I n. Lambda I n is a matrix. All right, so you got A minus lambda I n times vector x equals the zero vector for some x not zero. Now, what does this mean? This means that this homogeneous equation, A minus lambda I n times x equals the zero vector, has a non-trivial solution, right? Because the x here, the x that we're in question about, right? It's a non-zero vector, so it has to be non-trivial, the solution here. 
So that means that's equivalent to saying that a minus lambda i n times the vector x equals zero has a non-trivial solution, has a non-trivial solution. Non-trivial solution just means the vector x there is non-zero, right? Now what's that equivalent to saying? If you have a non-trivial solution, we know the homogeneous equation always has a solution, namely the, the zero vector, called the trivial solution, but if there's a non-trivial solution, that means you're going to have a free variable. In other words, you're going to have a non-pivot column. A minus lambda i n has a non-pivot column. There's the proof right there that lambda is an eigenvalue of A if and only if A minus lambda I n, that matrix, has a non-pivot column. So basically what you can do, you can row reduce that A minus lambda I n and check if it has a non-pivot column. If it has a non-pivot column, then lambda would be an eigenvalue of A. So that can be useful. All right, now we've proven what part of this? We've proven that Lambda is an eigenvalue of A if and only if A minus lambda times the identity has a non-pivot column. So also what we want to do, we want to show that also if you have a non-trivial solution to A minus lambda I n times x equals the zero vector. That's uh, this blue equation here. Well, that's a homogeneous equation of some type. So x is the eigenvalue, eigenvector, eigenvector corresponding to lambda. Well, that's not too difficult to show. So let's just say, okay, let's just note here, moreover. So x not zero is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda. This is true, right, if and only if. According to the definition, let's go back to the definition. What does it mean, the definition? Well, the definition is right here. X has to be what? A non-zero vector such that AX equals lambda X, right? AX equals lambda X, so this is true if and only if AX equals lambda X. And here we're assuming x is not the zero vector for some x not the zero vector. But from above, right, we did a bunch of work above. Remember, we started off with um, that, right? Let me get my underline right here in yellow. And that took us to this equation right here. Right? So that's equivalent to in blue. Ooh, crap. A minus lambda i n times x equal to zero vector has a non trivial solution. namely the non-zero vector, x. And that's what we wanted to show, right? x is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda if and only if a minus lambda i n times x equals zero vector has a non-trivial solution. Right, that's exactly what we wanted to show. All right. So let's just do an example, do an example. I'm not a huge fan of the way the book does this section. I think they should have probably done section two mixed with check section one, but we're gonna follow it the way they're doing. We're gonna try to follow it. So let's show that lambda equals seven 
is an eigenvalue of A is an eigenvalue of the following matrix. A is going to be 2, 4, the first column, 5, 3 in the second column. And then after we do that, find the associated eigen, find an associated eigenvalue, find an associated eigenvalue. All right, so solution. There's my solution right here. So lambda equals 7 is an eigenvalue of A which is what 2, 4, 5, 3 that's true, right? if and only if we said A minus lambda I in this case 2 has a non-pivot column All right, this is equivalent to A minus 7, I2. Let's actually write this out. Let's write this out. Okay, what's A look like? It's what? 2, 4, 5, 3, minus. So in place of this uh, lambda right here, we put a 7, right? Multiplying that by the 2 by 2 identity, so I'm going to have what? 7, 7 down the diagonal, and then zeros here. So if and, if and only if that matrix has a non-pivot column. All right, so let's subtract those dudes. So when I subtract, I'm going to get what? Negative 5, 5. 4, 3 minus 7 is going to give me what? Minus 4. If and only if that has a non-pivot column. All right, now we can row reduce this. I'm going to row reduce this. Row reduce this. So if I multiply the top row by 4, and the bottom row by 5, and add them together, I'm going to get what? Negative 5, 5, and what? 0, 0. This is through row reduction. Has a non-pivot column. Yeah. Ah, maybe, maybe I should have gone ahead and just put this together. I should have maybe row reduced in this step. I'll actually do the row reduction. Row reduction in this other step here. I will reduce, re reduce here. So you can actually see it. Okay. Now there are no questions. I got what? Negative 5, 5, 0, 0. So I multiply the top row by 4, the bottom row by 5, and add the top row to the second row. It has a non pivot column. Which is true. Right, it's true, right? There's a non-pivot column. Namely, if you look at the, the second column, right, there's no pivot. Yeah, so the first column has a pivot here, but the second column has no pivot. So since there's no pivot in the second column of this special matrix, A minus 7I2, right? A minus 7I2. Um, 7 is an eigenvalue. Now... How do we find the eigenvector, the associated eigenvector is the question. So, so to find the eigenvector, um, we're going to consider the equation a minus 7. I2, so or that's our lambda right there, right? Our lambda right here was 7. I'm going to put that in yellow. There it goes, yellow. Consider this homogeneous equation. 
right? So that's going to be an augmented matrix, A minus 7I2, augmented with the zero vector. So we already saw what A minus 7I2 was, right? A minus 7I2, we calculated earlier. It was what? Negative 5, 4, 5, negative 4. Negative 5, 4, 5, negative 4. All right? So we had that earlier. Where was that? Where was that? Let's see. Let me highlight that. Right here, right? This was A minus 7I2. It was this guy right here. A minus 7I2. And we're augmenting that with the zero vector. So we have a homogeneous system. And we row reduce this. And we've actually already done a little row reduction above, right? We got negative 5, 5, 0, 0. So let's write that in. Negative 5, 5, 0, 0. And then these guys on the right, they're not going to change, right? The zeros aren't going to change. All right, so we've got to consider this um, linear system. Let's uh, look at the general solution. So it looks like x2 is free here, right? Why is x2 free? Well, because here the second column doesn't have a pivot. Let's find x1. Not writing too well today. So we got what? Negative 5x1 plus 5x2 equals 0. We can solve this for x1. Divide both sides by negative 5. We get x1 equals x2, right? So in place of x1, I got x2. So when I look at the uh, parametric vector form of the solution, I'm going to say the vector form of the solution. It's going to be what? x2, x2. And you can factor out an x2 and you're going to have a 1, 1. So... You can pick x2 to be uh, any number you want except 0 because you don't want this to be a 0 vector. So we could pick up 1, 1, for example, to be our eigen. 1, 1 could be our eigen vector here. So uh, let's say x equals, for, let me just say for example. For example, 1, 1 is an eigenvector of a corresponding to lambda equals 7 eigenvector of a. To lambda equals 7. Yep. So we could have uh, picked x2 to be anything except 0. x2 cannot be 0 because if x2 were 0, you get the 0 vector. And eigenvectors are not allowed to be the 0 vector. They have to be non zero by definition. Okay, it's a little warm-up exercise. Let's see, what else can we do here? Anything else? Hmm. Okay, here's an exercise I'd like to run through. Um, so we know how to show something's an eigenvalue. Uh, showing something's an eigenvector, given a potential eigenvector is maybe a little different. Um, let's um, do an exercise. Show the following vector. Let's call it V, 1, 2, 0. Is an eigenvector. of A. A is the following matrix. 4, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 6, 6, 8. Then, so here we're given a, an eigenvector. We need to verify it's an eigenvector. 
Then we have to find an eigenvalue for the eigenvector. Then find the eigenvalue lambda for the eigenvector. All right. So we're going to go back to first principles here. Um, solution. So what does it mean for V is an eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda? What does that mean? Well, that means that A times V equals lambda times V, and V cannot be 0. V cannot be 0. Now, I have A here, so I'm going to write down what A is. A is what? 4, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 6, 6, 8. And I'm given V, right? What was V? Let me scroll up. 1, 2, 0. 1, 2, 0. And on the right-hand side, we don't have lambda. Like, lambda is the unknown here. Right, we're going to have to find that. So lambda is the unknown. I'm going to put it in red, and our vector, eigenvector is 1, 2, 0. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do matrix vector multiplication. So I'm going to take 1 and multiply it by the first column, 4, 2, 2, and that's going to give me, um, what is that, 4, 2, 2. Okay, then I'm going to take 2 and multiply it by the second column. I'm going to get what? Negative 2, 2, negative 2. I'm going to take 0 and multiply it by the third column, 6, 6, 8. I'm going to get what? 0 times 6, 6, 8 is going to give me 0, 0, 0. You add those together. And on the right-hand side, we're going to have, let's see, we're going to have lambda, 2 lambda, 0. So if this comes out, if you can solve for lambda here, that means um, the vector v was an eigenvector of a. Let's see. I'm going to add my three vectors together. I'm going to get, let's see, 2, 4, 0. And we're going to get what? Lambda, 2, lambda, 0. So this is equivalent to, does this have a solution? Yeah, right, if lambda is equal to 1. If lambda is equal to 1, you're in good shape. I'm sorry, lambda equals 2, what am I saying? Lambda equals 2, you're in good shape, right? So if lambda equals 2, you you line up what the first entry is, lambda equals 2. That would mean 2 times lambda would be equal to 4. And then 0 matches it to 0. So lambda equals 2. So it, since it uh, comes out nicely here, since you can get a solution to this, so lambda equals 2 is the eigenvalue and therefore since you have an eigenvalue you have an eigenvector and therefore v whatever v was I can't remember what v was it was some vector it was what 1, 2, 0, right? 1, 2, 0. Is the eigenvector. Yep. Okay, so that's a little exercise in showing something's an eigenvector and that simultaneously finds the eigenvalue if it works out. Now, if it didn't come out, if there was some kind of inconsistency there, if you didn't have a nice solution for lambda there, it would not be an eigenvector. It would not be an eigenvector. All right, so I think we'll probably just stop there and pick up with um, defining what an eigenspace is in the next video.